<laughs> Where are you going? Where am I going? Go ahead and ask him. Ask him why he needs you and I to be a bodyguard for him. Now, the most important thing is to get the lather off the customer's face without cutting him. All right, let's not talk about it. You got no kick coming. I'm not kicking. You had the best looking one. Sh so what? Yours had teeth. I, look, Will. The late, great comedian Lou Costello crafted an iconic legacy of laughter. There'll be no KP duties, and we'll draft a bunch of cuties. And instead of doing drills, we'll do the rapper! But behind the scenes, he faced heartbreak and tragedy few fans knew about. He was adored worldwide for his madcap slapstick alongside partner Bud Abbott. However, the off-screen Lou was a complex man who privately endured immense pain. More than 60 years after his shocking death at only 52, Costello's daughter Chris is finally opening up about the father, revealing Lou's hidden torment and more. Join us as we explore the untold truths about Lou Costello's life beyond the laughs. Fascinating Life of Lou Costello Let us take a brief run through the background of this great entertainment icon. Lou Costello was born on March 6, 1906, in the vibrant city of Patterson, New Jersey. His life and comedic persona were deeply influenced by his Italian-American family, a heritage that brought warmth and richness. His parents were Helen Reggie and Sebastiano Cristillo, with his father working as a silk weaver and insurance sales agent. Let me provide you with some background information. His father hailed from Caserta in Campania, Italy, while his mother had a diverse heritage with Italian, French, and Irish ancestry. Interestingly, her grandfather, Francesco Regge, originated from Piedmont, Italy. We'll grab the murderer and get the reward. We can't do that. This guy hired minute, you and I. Just a minute. He, he, he. Nevertheless, he's a rat. Costello went to public school 15 in Patterson and was known for his exceptional athletic abilities. He was a standout in basketball and supposedly won the title of Patterson's free throw champion not once but twice. In 1945's Here Come the Coeds, his basketball skills are on full display as he effortlessly executes his own impressive trick shots. In addition, he had a successful career as a boxer, competing under the alias Lou King. Costello's upbringing in an Italian household in America was a vibrant mix of cultures. From a young age, he learned the importance of family, humor, and hard work. Let me take you back to the early 1930s, when a chance meeting would change the world of comedy forever. When Lou Costello and Bud Abbott met, something magical happened. Their incredible chemistry led to the creation of one of the most legendary comedy duos of all time, Abbott and Costello. Their partnership was an intriguing combination of contrasting yet harmonious styles. Abbott's calm and composed demeanor perfectly complemented Costello's energetic and lively antics. Now, I'll watch out in the hall, and you watch here. Oh, no, you ain't gonna do it to me now. All uh, right, then you watch here, and I'll watch out in the hall. Okay. Resulting in a comedic chemistry that was unmatched in the vaudeville circuit. Abbott and Costello honed their comedic skills, trying out different sketches and perfecting their one-of-a-kind sense of humor. Their routines developed naturally, taking inspiration from everyday situations, clever wordplay, and the lively interaction between Abbott's dry humor and Costello's energetic character. In these early years, they carefully crafted routines that would captivate audiences for generations to come. The duo's unwavering commitment to honing their skills in vaudeville and burlesque set the stage for their subsequent triumphs in radio, film, and television. Through these live shows, their comedic timing was honed, and their bond as a comedic team grew stronger. During these crucial years, the strong bonds, respect, and harmony they cultivated would play a pivotal role in propelling them to stardom and creating a lasting impact in the entertainment industry. Abbott and Costello's rise to fame skyrocketed as they captivated audiences with their hilarious radio performances. captivating an ever-growing fan base. Their iconic Who's On First routine propelled them to legendary status. This legendary skit, a brilliant display of clever wordplay and impeccable comedic timing, will forever be remembered as a timeless gem in the world of comedy. The true brilliance of this piece lies not only in its humor, but also in the intricate and seemingly nonsensical dialogue that flawlessly highlights the unmatched synchronization of Abbott and Costello. The routine's triumph on the radio established their status as pioneers of comedy and won over audiences all over the country. Their transition from radio to the silver screen was a significant turning point in their career. 1944's One Night in the Tropics was a pivotal moment in their career as it brought their comedic brilliance to a larger and more diverse audience. Do I have to go into the ring with Rocky Hanlon? What are you worrying about? I'll be in there with you every minute. 
dying to take a crack at Rocky. The duo's captivating on-screen chemistry and hilarious shenanigans struck a chord with audiences, leading to a series of blockbuster films throughout the 1940s and 1950s. They have an impressive filmography filled with blockbuster hits that solidified their position as legendary figures in Hollywood. Buck Privates was a huge hit, capturing the audience's attention with its hilarious portrayal of military life and receiving high praise from critics. Yet Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein stands as the ultimate achievement of their film career. The duo's dynamic chemistry with classic monsters breathed new life into the horror comedy genre and created a timeless favorite. By blending humor and fright, they managed to captivate audiences of all generations. They ventured further into the world of cinema with hits like Abbott and Costello, Meet the Invisible Man, which demonstrated their knack for injecting humor into a variety of plots, cementing their status as versatile entertainers. Lou Costello, the legendary comedian, left behind a timeless legacy filled with laughter. However, unbeknownst to many fans, he experienced heartbreak and tragedy behind the scenes. He gained a massive global following for his hilarious slapstick comedy, often performed alongside his partner Bud Abbott. Yet behind the scenes, Lou was a multifaceted individual who silently carried a great deal of suffering. After more than six decades since his untimely passing at the age of 52, Costello's daughter, Chris. The first one is, when I read what Louis the Looper did to Rocky Hanlon, I said to myself, is now sharing insights about her father's life. Despite being a public figure, Costello remained an enigma to many. She confirms the rumors that have been circulating for a while, delving into Lou's hidden struggles and providing further insight. Lou Costello's personal life was filled with love, deep sorrow, and a strong dedication to making a positive impact beyond the glamorous world of Hollywood. In 1934, he entered into a marriage with Anne Battler, embarking on a journey Journey filled with love, family, and unwavering support. They created a life that revolved around the demands of showbiz, experiencing its ups and downs while also prioritizing their family, which became the most important part of Costello's life. Unfortunately, in the midst of their happiness, Costello and his family were struck by a tragic event. Quiet home life versus public persona. Lou Costello's daughter, Chris, reveals that off-screen, her father had a much more reserved and calm demeanor. Lou recognized the significance of maintaining a clear distinction between his professional and personal spheres. While Lou was a comedic genius on screen, he didn't always maintain that same level of humor at home. He found solace in simply being himself and didn't feel the urge to entertain his family with comedy routines. Oh, let's not talk about You got that. no kick coming. I'm not kicking. You had the best looking one. Sh so what? Yours had teeth. I, look, Wilbur. Chris recalls him as quite reserved. Lou understood the importance of taking time to relax and rejuvenate his creative spirit when he wasn't in the limelight. Chris mentioned that after long days of filming, Lou would often find solace in the simple pleasures of reading the newspaper or enjoying sports and westerns on television. When Lou was at home, he didn't bring his comedic hijinks with him from the studio. Chris tried to clarify that despite playing mischievous troublemakers on screen, he was quite different in his personal life. She explained that he was not one to entertain with Pratt Falls or any other clumsy antics at home. He had a different side to him when it came to his wife and children, a gentle and grounded father. Chick, you're what I call a real pal. It's all right. <clears throat> you take Mary. I Unlike the rambunctious Costello that everyone was familiar with on screen, he found joy in bringing laughter to his children, preferring to engage them through interactive games rather than relying on silly physical comedy. Lou understood the importance of timing and context when it came to comedy. Lou, a world-renowned entertainer, The next time that I tell you that I saw something when I saw it, you believe me that I saw it. Oh, relax. Had incredibly high expectations for his children's manners, respect, and education. He expected expected them to show respect to their elders, tender to their chores without grumbling, and give themselves wholeheartedly to their studies. Lou decided to withhold a car from his daughter Carol as a consequence of her decision to skip school. Lou desired for his children to develop into responsible individuals and valuable members of society. Chris highlights Lou's unwavering dedication as a husband and father, despite his hectic professional life. He was completely infatuated with his family, particularly doting on his mother after relocating her from New Jersey to California to be nearer to him. Lou valued the stability of his home life as a refuge from the pressures of fame. Lou Costello's Children Lou Costello deeply valued his family and felt an overwhelming sense of pride in his four children, Christine, Carol, Patricia, and Lou Jr. 
Patty Costello, the eldest daughter of Lou Costello, was born in 1936 and had a preference for staying out of the limelight. Patty found great joy in her life outside of Hollywood, but she couldn't help but feel an overwhelming sense of pride when it came to her dad's comedy legacy. One particular moment that deeply touched her was when a nearby elementary school started putting on an annual performance of Lou's famous Who's On First routine. After attending one of the shows, Patty approached the young actors with tears in her eyes. She expressed how deeply moved she was and shared that her father would have been overjoyed to see children performing his skit. She highlighted Lou's passion for spreading joy to children and bringing laughter to their lives. Decades after his passing, Patty was deeply moved by the way her father's talent continued to inspire new generations. And he fell asleep at the wheel, drove off an embankment, and uh I, we, we have a picture of mom actually with she maintained a distance from the spotlight but patty ensured that her father's art continued to thrive by actively promoting and organizing performances of his most beloved comedy acts carol costello was born in 1938 carol had a deep love for the entertainment industry just like her father in contrast to her older sister patty she had small roles in two of lou's films during the 1950s abbott and costello meet the mummy and abbott and costello meet the keystone cops carol was thrilled thrilled to get a glimpse into her dad's world through the magic of the big screen. As she grew older, she pursued a similar path to Lou, finding her passion in the world of television production. Carol has experience as a talent coordinator on popular game shows such as Card Sharks and Trivia Trap. It's evident that her father's vibrant and charming personality had a strong influence on her. Unfortunately, Carol's life was cut short at the age of 49 due to a stroke. Her experience in television was a heartfelt tribute to Lou's enduring legacy. By sharing the same joy in performing, she was able to keep Lou's memory alive. Let me tell you about Christine Chris Costello, Lou's youngest daughter. She was born in 1949. I can remember getting in the car with him to go have a... Here's very East Coast coffee clutch, you know, with grandma. She has cherished memories of Lou, who would lovingly read her bedtime stories and enthusiastically support her during school plays. Unfortunately, he passed away unexpectedly when she was just 10 years old. Chris paid tribute to her father by recounting heartfelt memories of him as a loving father, going beyond his fame as a comedian. Now, I'll watch out in the hall, and you watch here. Oh, no, you ain't gonna do it to me now. All uh, right, then you watch here, and I'll watch out in the hall. Lou had a son named Lou Jr., affectionately known as Butch, who was born in 1942. 1943, their household was devastated by a tragic event, the drowning accident that claimed the life of their son, Lou Jr. Unfortunately, little Lou lost his life in a tragic accident in a backyard swimming pool at the tender age of one. Let me take you back to March 1943. Costello experienced a bout of rheumatic fever after his winter tour of army bases, which left him unable to work for a period of six months. In November 4 of that year, he made a comeback on the team's beloved radio show. However, tragedy struck while he was rehearsing at their NBC studio. Costello received devastating news that his infant son, Lou Jr., had tragically drowned in the family pool. The baby had managed to loosen the slats in his playpen and fell into the pool without the nanny noticing. The little one was only two days away from celebrating his very first birthday. Costello had requested his wife to ensure that Lou Jr. stayed awake to listen to his father on the radio for the very first time. Instead of canceling the broadcast, Costello made a bold statement declaring, Wherever he may be tonight, I want him to hear my words, and continued with the show. The audience remained unaware of the tragic news until the conclusion of the performance when Bud Abbott took a moment to share the somber events of the day. Oh, come on, get up on your feet. It's only a dummy. Tell me nothing. It was smart enough to scare me. Come on, get a hold of the box. He recounted how Costello, in a remarkable display of resilience, embodied the timeless adage the show must go on that fateful night. According to Maxine Andrews of the Andrews Sisters, Costello's demeanor underwent a noticeable shift following the tragic loss of his son. She observed that he appeared less lighthearted and affectionate. He appeared to get easily frustrated. There was a noticeable shift in his demeanor. Lou was deeply devastated by the loss and never truly found emotional healing. Healing. The family was deeply affected by the tragic loss of their child, completely altering the course of their lives. During this time, Costello and his family experienced a deep sense of sadness that had a lasting effect on them. Years on the stage than Dad did, and uh, so 
He went in and filled in for dad. Causing them to view life in a different way and prioritize what truly matters. Lou was completely devastated, expressing that his heart was laid to rest in that coffin after his baby boy's funeral. The filmmaker, known for his hilarious and chaotic movies, took on a more introspective and serious demeanor in his personal life. Lou's heart was shattered as he laid his precious infant son to rest, plunging him into a world of unending grief. He was clearly in a state of deep distress, his soul shattered and irreparable. His once vibrant aura has faded, leaving behind a ghostly echo of its former radiance. The atmosphere within his home, which should have been filled with familial warmth, became pervasively solemn, transforming the once joyful ambiance. Chris, Lou's daughter, witnessed her father's transformation quietly observing as he withdrew into a world of subdued emotions. The loss affected her mother deeply, going beyond the tragedy of their son. It was as if she grieved not only for their son, but also for the loss of the happy and carefree version of her husband. Funny names? Nicknames, pet not, names. Not as funny as my name, Sebastian Dinwiddie. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Funnier than that? Oh, that's... Who had been overshadowed by overwhelming sorrow. Lou's children had the unique experience of navigating the highs and lows of growing up with a father who was larger than life. However, they continue to honor his memory by sharing cherished memories and upholding his legacy of bringing joy. Abbott and Costello defined 1940s comedy. In the 1940s, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello were incredibly popular figures in the world of comedy. I don't like you like that. Come on, chick. Be just like you used to be. Ah, go away with it. Had a boy, I'm happy. Abbott and Costello were a hilarious comedic duo who entertained audiences with their incredible chemistry. In the 1930s, they started collaborating. But unfortunately, their working relationship came to an end by the late 1950s. Throughout the span of 20 years, these two individuals rose to fame, captivating audiences across various platforms. The performers all had experience in vaudeville, but it was their collaboration as radio performers that really brought them into the spotlight. After that, they would rise to fame as superstars on the silver screen. Let me tell you about the fascinating beginning of Bud Abbott and Lou Costello's professional partnership in 1935. Oh, chick! They're out. Oh, so what? During that period, Bud Abbott was collaborating with another comedian who unfortunately became ill. Upon discovering that his comedic partner was unable to perform, Bud faced the urgent task of finding a replacement. Bud and Lou were already familiar with each other, as they were both well-known burlesque comedians. Bud invited Lou to join him as his new partner, and the two of them discovered an extraordinary connection. Bud Abbott and Lou Costello had completely different body types. Abbott was tall and slender, while Costello was short and stout. From the beginning, it became clear that Bud would play the role of the serious one, while Lou would be the one subjected to comedic mishaps. Abbott and Costello's collaboration started on stage, but it was their transition to radio in the late 1930s that truly captivated audiences worldwide. Over time, the duo's radio show gained immense popularity, leading to an exciting opportunity for them to collaborate on a film. Abbott and Costello's comedy was truly irresistible. The dynamic duo's contrasting sizes and hilarious physical comedy made them an instant hit. Fans who had already fallen in love with them through their radio performances were even more captivated when they made the leap to the big screen. What is on second? Who's on second? No, who is on first? I don't know. He's on third now. We're not talking about him. Abbott and Costello's feature film debut. In 1940, Abbott and Costello made their film debut in One Night in the Tropics, which also introduced their famous Who's On First routine to the big screen. Bud and Lou had been perfecting their routine for years, ever since they first started performing it back in their burlesque days. When the duo finally had the opportunity to showcase their skills on the big screen, their routine was flawless. The duo's debut in their first feature film catapulted them to unprecedented levels of fame, solidifying their status as megastars. Their immense stardom would continue to shine brightly throughout the following decade. Regrettably, the 1940s marked the final chapter for the duo as they went their separate ways in the 1950s, the who's on first. Where are you going? Yeah, where am I going? Go ahead and ask him. Ask him why he needs you and I to be a bodyguard for him. Routine remains Abbott and Costello's most iconic and enduring contribution, despite their subsequent endeavors. The comedic routine has gained immense popularity, 
to the point where it has arguably surpassed the duo in terms of cultural ubiquity. The duo fearlessly capitalized on the success of the routine and proceeded to perform it exactly as it was in another film. In 1945, The Naughty 90s was released as the second film showcasing Abbott and Costello's iconic Who's On First routine. Hey, you! I got a little pot for you. In that year, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello celebrated their 10-year working relationship, with only about another decade remaining before their mutual dislike became too overwhelming. In the 1950s, Abbott and Costello faced some challenges that affected their success, despite their previous popularity in the 1940s. Both performers were beginning to feel exhausted from their performances, whether it was due to the repetitive nature of their slapstick routines or the strain of being constantly in each other's company. It appears that Bud and Lou's deteriorating relationship was the primary reason for their decision to end their partnership. However, some people have pointed to certain events in 1957 as potential factors in their breakup. My friend, sit down, just nod. It's one of my clients, just nod, just nod. The truth about Bud Abbott. Lou Costello and Bud Abbott are widely recognized as one of the most legendary comedy duos in history. However, there have been persistent rumors about tension and discord between the two men throughout their remarkable 21-year partnership. Chris Costello debunks the myths surrounding Lou and Bud's friendship. Tell me, what's the idea of running out on me? I don't feel so good. I don't, I don't trust that Dr. Jekyll. What do you mean? Explaining that they remained incredibly close despite the challenges that accompanied their fame. It's clear that there were occasional disagreements between the two. Amidst the whirlwind of performance and filming schedules, disagreements often emerged regarding financial matters, screen time, management choices, and contractual obligations. Lou, specifically, struggled with feelings of resentment because he was not given an equal 50, 50 share of the profits with Bud. According to Chris, their relationship spanned over two decades during which they faced their fair share of disagreements. Come here. Now, we were down here before. You and I know that there was a laboratory here. However, it's important to note that these disagreements never translated into hatred towards one another. However, despite the challenges they faced, Lou and Bud's strong bond of love helped them navigate these difficult times together. Chris was deeply devastated by her father's sudden passing in 1959 at the age of 52. During this difficult time, she found solace in the comforting presence of Bud. While they were sitting together, watching an old tape of the duo's cherished Who's On First routine, Bud couldn't hold back his tears. He confided in 10-year-old Chris, expressing how much he missed his dear friend. And you turn into a mouse. A big mouse! Chris realized in this moment that, despite any previous difficulties, the friendship between Lou and Bud was truly unbreakable. The friendship between them blossomed from the moment they were first paired up in vaudeville, thanks to their incredible comedic chemistry. Immediately, Lou and Bud discovered their incredible on-stage chemistry, blending Lou's playful antics with Bud's composed demeanor to create uproarious comedy. From the very beginning, these two friends effortlessly transitioned from the stage to radio to film, their strong connection enduring the pressures of fame. Lou and Bud, despite their occasional disagreements over profits and top billing, always cherished their partnership and recognized its unique value. Chris shares how Bud struggled to find his footing after the unexpected loss of his comedic partner, Lou. He was unable to replicate his previous success with any other partner. In interviews, he took the opportunity to clarify that any rumors of animosity between him and Lou were completely unfounded. The comedy they shared had a profound impact on millions of people, leaving a lasting impression on their lives. Coping with family tragedies Lou Costello portrayed a lively and optimistic character in his performances, but Chris uncovers the profound personal hardships that had a lasting impact on him. In 1942, Lou experienced a devastating loss when his infant son Butch tragically drowned. It was a deeply heartbreaking event that left a lasting impact. Watching him do a number out on stage one night. Although Chris had not yet been born, Lou described feeling immense grief due to a family tragedy. Tragically, little Lou Jr., who was only one year old, wandered into the backyard swimming pool while briefly unattended and passed away. Lou was completely devastated, 
Chris affirms that Lou's life was forever altered following the tragic loss of his beloved son. The filmmaker known for his uproarious on-screen chaos took on a much more subdued and serious demeanor in his personal life. Lou's eyes lost their usual sparkle as he grew distant from his daughters. Chris shares that her mother experienced a profound sense of loss that day, not only her son, but also the vibrant, carefree version of her husband. It is unfortunate that the Costello children were unable to experience the joy and liveliness of their father, Lou. There we are. Now we get the dolly out from underneath there. Lift up that end. Lift it up! After little Lou's accident, in order to pay tribute to Lou Jr.'s memory, Lou channeled his sorrow into the establishment of a youth recreation center that proudly carries his son's name. The charity became Lou's sanctuary, although it could never fully replace the emptiness caused by the absence of his son. After more than 15 years, Chris faced another devastating loss when Lou tragically passed away from a sudden heart attack at a young age. The 10-year-old was deeply affected, realizing she would never again have the chance to hear her father's voice or see his face. Chris carried the lasting impact of her father's sudden departure, a traumatic event that shaped her entire existence. She confesses that she often imagines Lou still being alive if he had lived a little longer. You mean you saw them? No, 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 no. Well, then where did they go? I don't know. If they're gone, I want my insurance money. I'm... She is deeply disappointed by the limited amount of time she has had with him. Chris is deeply moved by Lou's artistic legacy, but the personal losses have left lasting wounds that have never fully healed. She holds on to cherished memories of him reading bedtime stories and giving her goodnight kisses, even in the midst of the heartache of losing little Louie and her father. The legacy of Lulu Costello's life may have been tragically cut short, but his legacy of laughter continues to thrive thanks to his iconic comedy and generous spirit. Chris Costello wants her father to be remembered for his incredible sense of humor and his immense kindness. In 1956, a significant milestone was reached when Lou and Bud Abbott were honored with induction into the Baseball Hall of Fame. This special recognition was a tribute to their legendary Who's On First routine, which has become an iconic part of baseball history. The skit's clever wordplay catapulted it to the status of one of the most influential comedy acts in history. Now, the most important thing is to get the lather off the customer's face without cutting him. Lou and Bud's induction left an indelible imprint on American pop culture, solidifying their place in history. Even after 60 years since his death, Lou's iconic routines, such as Who's On First, continue to make regular appearances in various forms of media. His groundbreaking comedy style can be observed in a wide range of content. Spanning from timeless reruns to modern-day films, Chris frequently comes across younger individuals who are discovering and appreciating her father's work. The legendary routine continues to breathe life into Lou's spirit each time it is broadcasted. Chris is able to witness her father's kindness, continuing to make a difference through the Lou Costello Jr. Youth Foundation. This foundation, which her father established, is still active today and continues to offer valuable services to underprivileged children. This quote from Lou perfectly captures the belief that money should be used to benefit others. The foundation is truly remarkable in its commitment to making a positive impact through its platform and resources. Oh, I don't think I'm that good looking. Oh, who's talking about you? Chris finds it crucial to highlight that Lou's family is the true embodiment of his enduring legacy. Chris passionately recounts cherished memories of her beloved father, ensuring his story is conveyed with genuine authenticity. She talks about Lou with great admiration, mentioning how he would read bedtime stories, cheer her on during school plays, and patiently teach her how to fish. Chris took it upon herself to ensure that her own children truly understood the exceptional nature of their late grandfather. While it's impossible for any recordings to truly capture Lou's spirit. Look, would you like to hear a story on Little Red Riding Hood? Sure. Yeah! Oh, come on, hurry up before the policeman comes, quick! His legacy lives on thanks to the efforts of his loved ones, who are dedicated to preserving his memory. Chris pays tribute to her father by revealing the untold stories of his extraordinary talent, his close bond with Bud Abbott, and his unwavering kindness. Chris's portrayal of Lou goes beyond simply capturing his comedic talent, allowing the audience to truly understand and appreciate the man behind the laughter. He is truly a legendary figure in the annals of Hollywood. His unexpected departure created a void in the young girl's life that would never truly heal, a constant ache that would endure for years to come. The absence of her father reverberated like a deep void, serving as a poignant reminder of the lasting impact of loss. Frisco ain't big enough for the both of us. 
On your feet, you double-crosser on your feet there! Chris's adult years were burdened by an unfulfilled existence, constantly reminded of the precious moments she would never get to share with her father. Lou Costello's legacy is a testament to the joy he brought to the world, providing comfort in the face of personal hardships. However, for Chris, it provided only partial relief, falling short of completely soothing the deep pain caused by the significant losses she had experienced. In the midst of her life's darkness, Chris held on tightly to glimmers of light, treasuring the memories of her father's heartfelt bedtime stories and his loving goodnight kisses. Lou's impact is felt not just in the pages of entertainment history, but also in the cherished memories that provide solace to his daughter as time marches on. Despite his untimely departure, Lou Costello's comedic brilliance continues to resonate throughout history, serving as a reminder of his enduring legacy and the profound sadness that accompanies personal loss. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.